After the Toronto Raptors drafted Arizona center Christian Coloco with the 33rd overall pick in the most recent draft, there weren't any questions about the fit, but there were questions about his immediate impact and what his ceiling in the league would be. But after watching him play only 11 games into the season, it appears as though the Raptors and Masai Ujiri have struck gold again in the draft. Let's get into it. What's going on, NBA and Raptors fans? It's Jacob here back with Amateur Sports, your source for the greatest coverage and analysis on the latest Toronto Raptors news. We do news and coverage on the Raptors every single off day. And on top of that, we do watch parties for every single Raptors game day. So if you like what you see from today's video, then make sure you are subscribed to the channel. You can help me on my road to 13,000 subscribers on this channel. And if you find yourself enjoying this video along the way, the easiest thing you can do to support the channel is just take a second out of your day to drop a like on the video. Let's try to get to 200 likes for this one. But in this one, we are going to be discussing Christian Coloco. And I kind of wanted to make this video yesterday, but it was a Raptors game day, so I delayed it to today. And unfortunately, we didn't have the immediate reaction to that outstanding six block performance against the Chicago Bulls. And we unfortunately have the poor performance yesterday from the Raptors, one where Christian Coloco did get into foul trouble, which we will discuss a little bit more as we go further into this video. But it's very clear after the 6-5 and five start to the season that the Raptors may have just done it again with the draft. They are very much known for as an organization for finding the diamond in the rough sort of players and scouting really well going into the draft. And sure, there's going to be some blemishes to the draft record as there would be for any team, but there is a definite track record, especially in the recent history in the Masai Ujiri era that we have here. There is a track record for finding the right pieces for this team, no matter where they are picking in the draft. I mean, you have late first round picks like Pascal Siakam, who before his injury was looking like an MVP candidate. You have OG and an OB picked in the 20s, who is an excellent 3 and D player, perfect complementary piece to an ascending core. And now you have potentially an excellent acquisition here at 33rd overall pick. Christian Coloco. And we're going to talk about Christian Coloco, what he has done over the course of the season, why he makes this Raptors team so much better right away in his rookie season. And then we're going to finish on what his ceiling is in the NBA for this Toronto Raptors team. So for starters, going into the draft, if you guys are followers of amateur sports in this brand, the best time of year for this channel in terms of viewership is leading up to the NBA draft. I really love covering the draft and it seems like a lot of people who watch this channel also really enjoy consuming the content. I break down all the prospects, especially in you know the early second round range where the Raps were picking this year. You know, you guys are busy. You don't have a ton of time to go through all these prospects or learn about them. So I try to condense a bunch of prospects and their potential and their fit with this team down into 10 to 15 minute videos. And there was a big focus going into the draft on Christian Coloco for myself. I was a big fan of this player ever since I saw him for the first time. And it looked like a really intriguing player for the Raptors to take at 33rd overall. We were missing definitely last season a rim protector. And I spoke a lot about what a rim protector would do for this team. I will get into that with what Christian Coloco is doing for this team. But a super athletic big man, seven feet tall, moves his feet really well on defense, does really well in interior defense, of course, showing signs of being a good perimeter defender when he moves his feet and showing good signs in drop coverage. The offensive game was really starting to come along in its final season at Arizona in college, but he didn't win Defensive Player of the Year, and it showcased as well with his improvement that he won the Most Improved Player Award. Going into the draft, I wanted him at 33rd. I will be honest, he wasn't a number one guy on my list, but he was very high on my wish list going into the draft. And I was so high on Christian Coloco going into the draft that I actually bet and I wagered on him to get selected in the first round because having scouted him like as far as centers that are available there's got to be teams interested in taking this guy in the first round well he fell all the way to the Raptors at 33rd overall I wasn't complaining was very very happy with that one in fact you can go back and watch my pre-draft analysis and shows you just how high I was on Coloco going into the draft so we selected him and my initial thoughts were of course this was a great pick by the Raptors but more of my thoughts were about his potential. And at 33rd overall, I got to say, he has really shocked me with how good he's looked so far this season. Because I spoke in the offseason that it's going to be a learning curve. It's going to be a process with Christian Coloco. And based on his summer league performances, I'm like, this is a really good player who has a lot of potential. He's just not quite there yet. And he might need some time in the G League to really sharpen up his game. I don't think he's be getting tons of NBA minutes right out the gate to start his career. And boy, oh boy. 
I was wrong about that one. Coloco has come into the team like really quickly, gotten minutes right out the gate. He I, he earned it in preseason, and Nick Nurse is showing a lot of confidence in the player. If the Raptors are ever missing one of the five starters due to injury, and right now, of course, Siakam is out, Christian Coloco is the guy who comes in to fill out the starting lineup because he's just a piece that we didn't have last year, and it just makes this team so much better. The offensive game, that stuff is coming. Yesterday, it wasn't his best. He was two for eight from the field and had some really good opportunities at the rim. That stuff is going to come. Confident of that. The defensive stuff is really already there. The interior defense, I mean, we saw it on full display. He blocked Patrick Williams three times in two minutes a couple of nights ago, looking really good on the interior. One problem is the fouls, which again, I will cover in just a second here. But what's been the most surprising, I mean, we knew about his interior defense. We saw it in college, already seen in the NBA. What's really above the expectations so far is the perimeter defense. He's moving his feet really well. And what's even better is his drop coverage. When he's playing in the pick and roll, he's doing a great job of shadowing the ball handler while also taking away that passing route to the guy who's rolling off the screen. He's looking really, really good in those situations. He himself is looking good and he just makes the rest of the defense so much better. OG and Anobi, as good of a defender as he is, is even better when he has Christian Coloco there. And again, if you've been following this channel, you've been watching my stuff last season to the end of the season and the off season, I talked about how a rim protector would just elevate the level of all of the other defenders. Like you have OG and Anobi where now, instead of OG having to be the guy who stops you at the rim, having to be the guy who has to get the full stop on his own when he's going one-on-one -on -one with the player. Now, instead, OG, who is such a talented perimeter defender, and we're really starting to see it now. He's leading the league in steals, by the way. Instead of having to completely stop the player, he can controllably usher that player into the paint where they're met by the seven-foot giant and block machine, Christian Coloco, which is just so much better for the players when they're trying to get those stops. It makes OG a better defender, but having Christian Coloco there, it makes Christian Coloco a better defender by having guys like OG and Anobi there. And the other great perimeter defenders we have on this team, like Pascal Siakam, like Fred Van Vliet, just to name a couple. So excellent fit for this Raptors team. I spoke about what that rim protector would do for this team last season. I'm really happy we didn't have to shell out a first round pick in order to get one. Instead, we traded the first round pick, we moved down in the draft, we get Thaddeus Young, and we also get in the draft Christian Coloco. It's a big risk moving down in the draft, trading away Goran Dragic's contract. That gamble is more than looking like it is paying off after the way Coloco has started his NBA career. One issue that he still has defensively that does need some work, and yesterday was a prime example, it's the fouling. It was a problem in college. It was something that I highlighted in the pre-draft analysis of the player. He fouls a little bit too much. That really isn't diverting away. He just got to find better ways to stay on the court more often. Last yesterday, excuse me, last game, we really could have used him in some more minutes because he was so good two nights ago, but got in foul trouble early. Maybe there were some soft calls, but moving screens, like for a guy who's constantly going up for blocks, there's going to be fouls there. You can't be letting the ref call a cheap foul on you for a moving screen. I think there was a couple offensive fouls that he had, which turns over the ball as well as the fact that, again, it does put him in foul trouble. That was a little bit frustrating, but again, this is a very young player. He's already playing well above my expectations. That is something I'm not overly, overly concerned about. It, it's just something that has happened for the player, and it does need to improve. Going into the season, I said that he would struggle to get NBA minutes, especially out the gate, and he would need some time in the G League. It's looking like he might need no time in the G League here because he had looked so good for this team. So I will chalk that up to me being wrong about the player. So with all this talent he's showcasing here, he is one of the, one of the older rookies, which was uh, not necessarily a criticism from other people, but just maybe like it's an older rookie. So the potential, the ceiling, how high it is might be a little bit lower. But at the moment here, this looks like the defensive anchor that team this team has been missing. I mean, he's already looking like it as a rookie. I mean, just wait till he really starts to fine tune his game defensively, really starts to read the decision making of the point guard potential that's coming at him when he switches on to when he's playing in drop coverage, the way he can read the game defensively. And on top of that, when all that stuff really sharpens that little bit more, we can also focus on him rotating to the outside and covering, you know, those backdoor plays or those weak side corner threes to the Raptors really do love to leave open a lot of the time, and especially yesterday against the Chicago Bulls. Those things are going to fine-tune. Defensively, he is going to be a menace. And offensively, I mean, look, his game needs some sharpening. We know that, but 
He's a guy who can get to the rim. He can finish decently well. That's going to be continuing to improve over the course of this season and his career. But one thing that is really, really exciting about the offensive game is the potential for somebody to be able to actually shoot jump shots here. We see him at the free throw line. He can hit his free throws. He's hitting them well. It's a good shooting stroke. He has the confidence that when he's wide open to take on some jump shots, they're not falling at the NBA level just yet. But it appears that this is something that he wants to work on and is beginning to come along. So defensively, full confidence in his ability to be a continuous NBA player and potentially the starting big man for this team going forward. Like if a trade does happen and we maybe sharpen up more of the bench or Adam Prospect, that this is a player that you can rely on to start for your team. I would say like right now, I mean, right now he's looking like a good player to have in the starting lineup for your team, the way the team plays around him and the way he can defend and help with the guys who are on the perimeter defending there. So that is looking exceptional. As far as the ceiling and his talent, this could be your franchise big that you have been looking for. This could be the exact piece that we needed out of that draft. It's very early. It's only 11 games, but this is looking like the absolute steal of the draft at 30th and overall. To get him in the second round, some teams will be wondering and scratching their heads how they let this guy slip out of the first round because he was there for the taking. Very early in his career, he's going to have to maintain this stuff, but the signs are there that he is going to just continue to impress defensively. The IQ is there. The talent is there. Offensively, the decision-making is there. The fine-tuning is going to come. Very excited about his career. What a great pick, again, by the Raptors. If you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to drop a like. It does go a long way to supporting the channel. And make sure you are subscribed to Amateur Sports for more videos and content just like this. Watch parties for every single Raptors game. And on the off days, try to get a video out talking about the team in videos just like this. Stay tuned. And I'll see you again next time for another video or a stream.